I've got my elf hat on and I am taking you to my own little toy workshop. I'm going to share with you my ideas on how you can make the toy business designer badge work super fun for your scouts. Remember, these are my ideas. I do not work for Girl Scouts. I am simply a troop leader that loves sharing my ideas. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to show you how to make this super adorable elf hat. It is no sew, no measure, and crazy cheap to make. Let's get into the requirements for the Toy Business Designer Badge. This badge is about teaching your scouts what an entrepreneur is and then giving them the chance to be an entrepreneur by coming up with their own toy idea. Once they have their idea, they're going to put it down on paper. Now GS gives your scouts the option of creating toy models instead of just drawing them. I thought that that would be a little tough since every scout is really going to come up with a different idea. One might come up with a new plushy stuffed animal, another might come up with some type of new mermaid that swims. They could create paper models, but that's a lot of paper that I didn't want to waste and you will see we are really going to have some fun with a different activity. The last step is having your scouts present their new toy by sharing their idea with other scouts, family, or friends. Senior and cadet scouts are the perfect audience. So once you've decided to do this badge for a meeting, the first thing you're going to do is ask for some help from some older scouts. The easiest way to find volunteers is probably by jumping on your service unit's Facebook page or message board and see if anyone is willing to attend your meeting to help your scouts earn their toy business designer badge. I'd probably shoot this out about a week in advance. Here's a little script that you can use. Make sure you add your own meeting details like where and when you meet. Older scouts are probably looking for service hours, so I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how many scouts are actually willing to help your littles. Now, if you cannot get help from older scouts, you absolutely can ask your guardians to join in. However, having older Girl Scouts volunteer creates that sense of GS family and really grows that scout bond that we're looking for. So once you've secured your volunteers, we are going to fast forward and get to the beginning of your meeting. You are going to pump up that excitement like you are not at a Daisy meeting, but you are at a Tony Robbins workshop. Okay, so I totally just reached myself by saying Tony Robbins. Anyways, I truly believe that the energy you bring to this meeting is going to be everything. So get your own little elf hat on, bring those scouts into their special toy land, and introduce your volunteers like they are just the coolest in the world. And I'm sure your scouts will be all excited for the first activity. Now you're probably a little surprised at this next slide I'm showing you because our first activity is not part of the badge requirements at all. It's a DIY toy craft. So why do an activity that's not part of the requirements? Well on paper I felt like the badge was a little lackluster. This is also a badge that you will most likely be doing as second year daisies so some new scouts might be still earning their petals. This craft is a great way to double up on badges. Since we aren't making toy models, I wanted the scouts to also have the opportunity to do something hands-on. This badge is very conceptual. Coming up with a brand new idea in a short amount of time and getting in front of an audience could be really difficult for some first graders. With this craft, hopefully every scout will walk away from this meeting having some fun. And boy, oh boy, are those daisies' attention spans short. I don't think I really have to explain this one for y'all. Lastly, this is a great icebreaker for your scouts and whoever is joining them in this meeting. Later on, we want our scouts to feel really comfortable sharing their toy ideas and getting help from those volunteers. My first toy craft idea is a twirly gig. This is a really simple DIY toy. If you have a large group, this is perfect because you can do a lot of the cutting prep work prior to your meeting. Whatever toy you make, you want to make sure you have enough time for your toy presentations later on. The key to this toy is making sure your bottom disc can really move up and down your stick. Now I stuck a bead on top of mine just to be fancy and I used some hot glue to secure my top paper disc, but I do understand that using hot glue might not be an option. If it's not, just use some tape, wrap it above and under your top disc to create a little edge so that it doesn't move around. I will throw the step-by-step -step link of how to make this in my description box. I have been really whipping this thing around and it is sturdy and so much fun. Before I move on to my next toy idea that I am absolutely in love with, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And as always, feel free to share my videos with other leaders. Here it is, my dish towel teddy bear. I think these are just so cute, and this is perfect if you are also fitting in your Use Your Resources Wisely pedal. Your scouts could also be considering caring and gifted to a friend, or how adorable would it be to be a sister to every scout and give these to another Daisy Troop in your area. I bought a pack of four dish towels that cost about $5.50. 
Now, I am comfortable spending about two to three dollars per scout per meeting, so these were definitely in my budget. Your scouts can embellish them however they want. Giving them options on different colored ribbons would make it feel more like a toy shop as well. So here's a quick tutorial on how to make them. I'll put a link for a slower step-by-step -step tutorial for this in my description box as well. Tightly roll the two ends towards the middle until they reach the center of the towel. You will see that the two bottom rolls create the bear's legs and the two top rolls become the arms. Once it's rolled, you are going to give the towel a twist and then fit the two top rolls around the bottom. Next, secure your bear with a rubber band and feel free to really move it around and get the shape that you're looking for. Then grab the top section for the right ear and then do the other side. The embellishments are great because they will hide the rubber bands and you won't even see those at all. And there you have it. I cannot tell you how much joy I felt when as soon as my daisies were done making their bears, they were like making them dance around, playing with each other. It was just like a really awesome troop leader moment, something that I felt that they really enjoyed and I cannot wait for you to make them. So after you've made your toy, it's time to move on to that badge work. While your scouts are cleaning up, you can start discussing what it means to be an entrepreneur or better yet, have one of your older scouts share what it means. Then make sure to give your daisies a couple of examples. Don't worry about coming up with your own because you can find them on the volunteer toolkit. However, as a leader, I would come up with your own toy design to share with your scouts. Mine was a remote control unicorn Pegasus that <laughs> once it hit a certain speed, it would fly up into the air. Next, you'll tell them how excited you are for them to try their hand at being a toy designer entrepreneur. Whatever example you do share with your scouts, it's very likely that they are going to reuse your idea. So it's important that we ask them a ton of questions, really get their wheels turning, and help them create their own unique toy and come up with an idea of their own. So this is an example of what your scouts might come up with. My daughter created a Santa and Rudolph drone. Some questions your volunteers can ask your scouts when they are coming up with their designs are like, what makes your toy fun? Who is it for? What is it made out of? Do not worry about writing these questions down because the volunteer toolkit has a script for your volunteers with all these questions on it. But I would go ahead and create some kind of a printout for your volunteers with these questions on it so that they can have them in front of them at the meeting. Once all your scouts have their new toys drawn out, it's time to present them to the group. Here's my daughter with her drone. Since scouts may not really know what to say once they get up in front of everyone, the BTK also has a presentation script for them as well. Some scouts may not be able to read these words in front of a group yet, so you could just like kind of crouch down to their side and feed them the script so they know what to say. After getting feedback, Joyce decided to add some rainbow snowflake lights to hers and we all thought that it would be really cool if the camera on it could see who's been good or bad and then send that information to the North Pole to Santa. I was blown away at how confident my scouts were during the presentation and it was just a new side of them that I haven't really gotten a chance to see yet. It was exactly why being a troop leader can be so awesome. And of course my daughter's got her super cute elf hat on which just added to the fun. Nothing says toy workshop better than a Rankin Bass inspired elf hat. This red felt cost me like 48 cents and with the pink band and the snowflake, I'm probably just into this for about 75 cents. If you do not have enough funds or time to make these for each scout, you could also just make these for your leaders or just make one and give each scout the option of putting it on while they're presenting their toy. Here's how to make it. Lay your felt down flat. Grab the top right corner, fold it in and around a bit towards the opposite bottom corner until your bottom right corner nicely meets the top left corner. This might take a minute, but I promise you this is the trickiest part. Once you have it together, go ahead and hot glue it to create a seam. You will see that this creates like a point at the bottom. We want out pads, we do not want to look like Robin Hood, so just trim the bottom by making a little crescent cut with scissors. Next we have our pink belt. I splurged on sticker felt since I was being lazy and I didn't really want to use the hot glue gun anymore. So you can just go ahead and eyeball it and cut a nice strip and just stick it around like so. Don't worry about the two ends meeting nicely in place because that's what our snowflake is for. The snowflake is a cute touch but will also hide the ends. Since we can't measure each scout's head, hot gluing some elastic on the insides to make it more like a party birthday hat works great. And here's your elf cap. So like I said, these are really simple, inexpensive, and 
this is what's really gonna give your meeting that super fun elf touch. And just like that, your scouts have earned their toy business designer badge. Make sure you send a great big thank you to all of the volunteers that helped you during your meeting, and I'll see you later.